Good morning, everyone. I hope you're well. Um, so my name is Evan, and I'm here today to talk about publicity rights in China. So publicity rights or personality rights are defined under the Civil Code of People's Republic of China, and they're defined under Article 990 uh, as rights enjoyed by everyone in China under tre uh, right to name, right to trade name, likeness, etc. And the Article 993 does specify that uh, the rights can be used by others only when the right owner grants permission. Publicity rights were first established in the U.S. as an extension to privacy law during the 1950s, which is interesting because the whole scope of intellectual property in China was only developed from the 1980s, and through the development, the scope of protection has vastly expanded. So why is this topic interesting for me personally? Um, to say politely, I am a pop culture enthusiast, I pretty much grew up with the internet as part of my daily life, being a Gen Z. So I experienced firsthand, and I'm still experiencing the rise of social media, which has made the access to celebrity news uh, quite easy, uh, whether it's their personal life or their professional endeavors. And as an IP student, I am interested in discussing the different legal issues within the entertainment industry, which also includes publicity rights. And as I am familiar with the jurisdiction from the Western world, preparing this presentation did give me the opportunity to learn more about the Chinese jurisdiction and how publicity rights do translate within the Chinese jurisdiction. So I'm looking forward to share with you my research. So the, this presentation will first outline the scope of protection for publicity rights in China. From there, I will explain a pivotal case that challenged the scope. And following that said case, because I don't want to give you spoilers, um, there will be an evaluation of the scope. And yeah. So, publicity rights were first established in the general principle of civil law of 1986. And it was heavily influenced from the German civil law code. And there has been an amended version in 2017. So, the main change between 1986 and 2017 was the subject matter from citizens, as you can see here, citizens, citizens, to natural persons. Um, it is important to notice that change because since China became the member state, a member state of the WTO in 2001, the country has made active efforts to use a more standardized vocabulary, and these new rules do expand the law not only for Chinese citizens, but also for anyone who is looking to establish a business in China. However, it does look like the amended version lacks precision when it comes to publicity rights. It is very broad. And at that time, China did have the difficulty to establish a comprehensive civil code. So it was not until 2020 uh, where the civil code became the first complete civil code in China and it did come into effect in 2021. Concerning publicity rights, the civil code does provide a better understanding of the scope. So from article 19, uh, 992, where it says that personality rights are not inherited to um, another uh, article 1020, where it does specify that um, the exceptions in which portrait rights are do not require consent. And there are similar publicity rights provision that can also be found through trademark law, uh, un uh, unfair competition, advertising law, etc. However, when it comes to name rights, image rights, there is a big overlap between publicity rights and trademark law. Concerning the key case that challenged the scope of publicity rights in China, is the Michael Jordan and Chodan Sports. And I will also specify now that I apologize in advance for any mispronunciation of Chinese words. But um, the case concerns Michael Jordan, which is an American basketball player known worldwide, who sued the Chinese uh, sportswear company Chodan Sports for publicity rights infringement, mainly in concern to name and image rights. 
and this was a very lengthy legal battle that took a, a couple of years. And there are three main legal, three legal, legal issues at stake. The first one being the uh, potential name infringement, name right infringement when it comes to that Chinese character, Zhou Dan. At first, both the Beijing peop uh, uh, Intellectual Property Court and Beijing High People's Court did uh, reject Michael Jordan's claim on the basis that there was not enough proof that uh, of a connection between the specific uh, trademark and Michael Jordan as they said that the relevant public would be unlikely to connect those two marks, uh, both the mark and Michael Jordan. However, the Supreme Court did reverse the judgment and ruled in favor of Michael Jordan, saying that um, it, the court does recognize the full name, Michael Jordan. However, the public in China does uh, is more familiar with referring to Michael Jordan as only his family name, so Jordan. And as such, it was also proven that between 1984 and 2010, so even before the mark was registered, there was a common appellation for the basketball player in China, and it was this Chinese character, Chao Din. So there was a direct link established, and Michael Jordan was able to enjoy his name rights for the Chinese transliteration of his name. And this specific registration had to be revoked subsequently. The second trademark uh, concerns the pinging uh, appellation, which is pinging is just uh, the transcription system for Chinese writing in the Latin alphabet. And in that case, it was difficult to establish to prove a, a direct link between Chao Din and Jordan. Although Chao Din can be considered as pinging for this specific Chinese character, um, it is not the only way as Chinese um, the, the Chinese character can be yeah, multiple of um, uh, patterns in order to uh, compose Chao Din. And the third issue concerns image rights. Uh, sorry, yeah, image rights. And the disputed mark concerned this specific image. And as you can see, maybe there was, uh, some people do feel like there's a resemblance. However, the court also rejected the claim, uh, Michael Jordan's claim. And they argued that the disputed image is only a silhouette and there are no specific facial um, attributes that can directly uh, link to Michael Jordan. So following that case, mainly the first uh, name right infringement case, it did gain a lot of traction in the world and it was a major step for foreign entities to establish their businesses in China. But the most important aspect is the fact that it is important for foreign entities to really um, make sure that they pr can provide enough evidence of their high reputation within the Chinese public. So just a couple of examples, um, there's a Chinese uh, basketball player, Yin Jianlian, who was able to um, establish his popularity within the Chinese public. And also the China National Intellectual Property Administration did recognize from both the UK actress Emma Watson and the US singer Taylor Swift that they are um, popular enough, they have an est uh, established high reputation in China. And a case where it didn't work was the UK supermodel Kate Moss, where for her it was a bit more difficult to prove her high reputation is in China. In the Michael Jordan case, there has been a couple of issues, mainly image rights, in which um, there are two cases that do affirm the court's ruling of the specific characteristics of an image rights protection. The first one being Bruce Lee, in which the Bruce Lee's daughter did was entitled to compensation after a restaurant chain um, used her father's image without the consent. And it was also highlighted in this case that um, there are postmodern rights under the Article 994 of the Civil Code in which a close relative can enforce the deceased right, even though technically there are no inherited rights. The second case is Usenbolt, in which 
the China Trademark Office did support Usain Bolt's claim in uh, opposition against a disputed image mark, and the CTMO did um, did recognize that Usain Bolt is a famous athlete and that the Chinese public is familiar with his victory pose, and also the disputed mark is very much similar as with the yellow shirt and the facial um, characteristics that are very similar. However, the Supreme Court did confirm in a recent case that silhouettes are protected as likeness under the Chinese, Chinese law. And this was a huge step since the Michael Jordan case. Um, so this case, essentially, which is also a typical case, and the role of typical case are, or guiding cases is just to assist the trial courts in rendering decisions. But in that case, the company Zhu Yu did um, post on their website a photo of a celebrity, and they also posted a, a list of clues as to for, for the guests to see who, who could the celebrity be. And people were very quickly able to um, recognize that it was Jackson Yi, or in Chinese, Ying Yang Chanxi. And obviously, the actor did not allow the use of his image. And as such, the court did state that, in the Article 1018 of the Civil Code, that the image in which um, the person has to be identified is not only to, is not only limited to the image itself, but also the context in which the image is used. And in that case, the silhouettes, but also the list of clues, and the fact also that the company Do You did highlight his, the actor's name in the comment section did amount to an infringement. Another uh, concern is the rise of advanced technology, mainly AI and the concept of deep fakes. And, and that the nature of deep is really pretty much about reproducing accurately fabricated image of people without their consent, mainly for pornographic or um, public political deception. And this technology not only harms celebrities, but also the average person. And as such, the technology would fall within the scope of protection for personal policy rights or privacy rights. Surprisingly, China does seem to be ahead of the US and the EU when it comes to AI contact regulations. Since 2022, there has been discussions about putting into effect provisions that will protect China from the possible dangers of emerging, emerging technologies. And China being the world's lar the largest litigation venue, the country has made proactively efforts to tackle issues um, that are against the country's traditional values of protecting human intellectual endeavors that contribute for the better of the society, for the public interest. So in conclusion, China does provide statutory protection against unauthorized use of someone's image. The Chinese Civil Code established a clear understanding of the scope. Uh, the judgment of the Chowden case did expand the scope in concern to name and image rights, not only for Chinese citizens, but for foreign people looking to establish their uh, brands in, in China. And despite the advance, the rise advance of technologies, China does seem more prepared than the Western jurisdiction. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions? <laughs> How do you see the deepfake playing out in the next 10 years? with the landscape you see happening in the legal landscape of the tech? It is very difficult because, um, I don't know if you've seen this, but for example, in the Western culture, um, Meta has introduced those AI personas where they use uh, celebrities such as Kendall Jenner or um, Naomi Osaka, and they have turned them into alter egos for people to interact with them using AI. So as it does seem like Meta has control, but it can quickly turn with, um, I don't know, the average person has an AI persona, and um, you wouldn't know, I don't know, like, um, there was a, I did specify that there is a typical case uh, concerning AI companions, and in that case, there was a company that produced this software for the, its user to produce their own AI companion, and, it, essentially, one of the AI companions was the image of a celebrity, and the celebrity did not obviously allow her use of her image. So
so she was able to sue and she got compensated for that. But I do feel like this case really does set precedence as to, of course, it mainly affects um, celebrities and most cases that I to talk about are regarding celebrities, but there is this slow shift that can quickly turn for the average person. And obviously it would be important for China, but also for other jurisdictions yeah. to um, set um, regulations in place now, or as soon as possible. <laughs> So you had a very great presentation. Not only the statutory provision regarding personality rights in China, but also the court decisions to show the development of the protection for such rights. My question would be quite naive. What do you think is the trend of the developments regarding the trademark protection? It does seem like China is implementing um, better regulations with trademark. Um, tra uh, I remember correctly that China has made at least four revision of their trademark regulations a uh, provision um, over the past twenty years, and so there is that aim of developing a better uh, provisions, especially when it comes to um, this idea that in China it's first filing first um, registered. And it can be very difficult for foreign entities when they want to establish their business in China when there's always already been a, uh, someone in China that has already registered. Um, but also the the fact that China is ready is really much so tackling bad faith um, marks or very much so um, putting first the public's interest in mind when it comes to uh, developing better provisions. So yeah. Thank you.